everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to share some things with you that has to do with upcoming temples because I have reason to believe we're going to see many, many more temples announced. And I'm going to show you why I think that. Um, in a nutshell, you know, being a YouTuber, uh, I'm privy to some information and I also get to see patterns and uh, clustering of information because I get reports from like many different people that uh, don't know each other, I presume, that all kind of say the same thing. So I'm going to show you something that I've been seeing. Um, I'm going to start with this. I've already read this comment in another video. This is from Angela McKee. Okay. Uh, this is in regards to the Washington DC temple rededication. She says, folks, I've been at the first, uh, the first two rededication sessions for the Washington DC temple today. One more tonight. President Nelson officiated the first session. He was walking slowly, but without any help. He mentioned how many temples are under construction, right? And dot, 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 he said he will be announcing even more to us in October. What a beautiful day. Now, okay, as of last conference, by himself, he has announced 100 temples. He broke the record. Uh, before him, uh, President Hinckley held that record. And I, if I remember right, because I did a number of videos about this, I think President Hinckley had announced 73. And his presidency uh, was longer than what President Nelson is currently at. So the temple announcements have just been at breakneck speed. Okay. And so with the last conference, he announced 17. We've talked about that to complete 100. And it looks like there's no, uh, there's no signs of stopping. Okay. According to what Angela McKee heard, um, I believe her. Let me show you a few more things. Okay. So I got some emails. All right. Um, I'll save this one for the end. Actually, let's see. So I got one today. This is from Mindy. She says, hi, Jared. It's uh, Mind Mindalin, sorry, Mindalin, Mindalin, Mindalin Migukin, French, aka Mindy M. Yeah, she she's popped up a number of times on the channel. She's joined some of my live streams, so I know her. Another temple worker I greatly trust uh, was at her daughter's state conference last weekend in Rancho Cucamonga <laughs> in Southern California. Uh, she partly shared, quote, thank you. Uh, thank you. How awesome your photos are. I love them. Uh, I'm back working at the temple mid shift Wednesday. I saw Elder Bednar Sunday up close and could almost touch him. He said they will announce 50. Yep. 50 new temples for the next year. The temple booklet says for every temple built, it increases the power of the priesthood on the earth and decreases the power of Satan. And I'm sure that's something that all of you are familiar with because I've, I've heard that so many times. Uh, I think they've just outright said it in general conference a bunch of times. Anyway, she continues. So no wonder so many more temples will be built. Your work is important. I hope you will continue with it. Heart, end quote. Here's a couple recent temple photos for your viewing. Uh, I know you're an am your amateur photography too. Smiley face. My Lee Hona article is out in October issue. Uh, excited to potentially touch somebody's life. That's awesome. Good job for getting into the Leahona. Good job, Mindy. Uh, she says, keep up the amazing and inspired work, Jared. Jesus is coming soon. Either way, uh, we have to prepare ourselves to meet God. Exciting times. May God continue to bless you and your family, Mindy. Thank you so much. I'm not going to share the photos right now. I, I just want to make sure that she's okay with me sharing them. I don't know if she was just, because like, I, I just want to make sure, because uh, I don't want to infringe on the, the copyright there. Okay, the next email, this is from Mike Goodman. Uh, he sent me just a number of things that he had heard, rumors. So take it with a grain of salt, but still, it's something worth considering. Number one, church uh, rebuild the far west Missouri with temple into historic sites similar to Nauvoo. Um, if you don't know what far west was, it, it, it was it's outside of Kansas City, Missouri. Um if I remember right, it's I think it's like northeast of there a ways, and it was uh, the headquarters of the church for a time. Okay, number two, normal operating hours for all temples to include Mondays. Uh, that would be interesting because I haven't heard very much talk about family home evening. I don't know if 
I, I don't know. Um, my assumption is that we're we're still supposed to be doing family home evening, um, and Mondays are reserved for that. But I, I haven't heard much about it from the church, so I don't know. Number three, church chapels and temples combined. Uh, they would be a multi-use building. On Sundays, it would be a chapel for all members, and during the week, it would be used as a temple. Now, that's a <coughs> excuse me. That's an that's an interesting thought. Um, especially when you think about the Kirtland Temple, because initially that's how it was used. But I think that's because the uh, intended purpose or, or temples as we know them today uh, had not been revealed by that point. So they, they were just using that building um, for the purpose of gathering as well as to receive revelation. We know that uh, Christ appeared there, Elijah, Moses, so on and so forth. So... You know, who's to say that that couldn't be true? It could be. Um, you might say, well, you know, once it's dedicated, uh, you need a temple recommend to go inside. Um, and, and that's true. But for all we know, maybe something will happen where the prophet's like, okay, on, on these days, this is a temple. And then on Sundays, uh, anybody can go inside. I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe not, but we'll see. Number four prefab smaller temples to reduce the time it takes to make temples. Now this, I think, actually has a lot to it, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, starting with, I think it was the Helena, yeah, the Helena Montana Temple. We're going to look at that in just a minute, because it looks like the Helena Montana Temple is the first of the prefab smaller temples. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Number five, stake buildings in certain areas to be retrofitted as temples. Now that's a rumor that I've heard ever since I was little, and uh, just because that hasn't really happened yet doesn't mean that it won't. You know, we, we saw what happened to the Provo. What is it? The Provo City Temple, um, or I can't remember what it's called. The Provo City Center Temple, City Center Temple. Uh, this used to be. Let me see if I can find the Wikipedia article. I think this used to be a tabernacle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So uh, this sat on the same site as the Provo Tabernacle uh, in Provo, Utah. So this was a tabernacle, and here's a picture of it, what it looked like. Okay. And uh, we don't really build tabernacles anymore. Uh, they were intended to be larger than just like your typical stake or ward building for like large gatherings. Um, so there, there's a number of these that are in Utah and maybe some other places, but they're, they're not really constructed anymore. So they're essentially now used as stake centers and probably uh, for, you know, different purposes. But this is what it looked like before. There was a fire and then they turned it into the Provo City Center Temple. And here it is right here. So there is precedent for taking a building that was originally designed for some other purpose and then turning it into a temple. In fact, I don't know if that's what happened with the Vernal Utah Temple. Because the Vernal Utah Temple uh, looks kind of peculiar. I wonder if this was a tabernacle before. Taber... Um, originally, the building served as the Uinta Stake Tabernacle. Yeah, this was a tabernacle. Um, in eastern Utah, the Tabernacle's foundation was constructed by nearby sandstone, and da -da -da, it goes on and on. Because uh, you can see, just by looking at it, you wouldn't necessarily think that this was like a temple because of the architecture. Um, I don't know what they may have added, uh, if anything, other than maybe the Angel Moroni statue. But um, here you have it. This was a tabernacle, or in other words, um, a building used as a stake center. Okay, So uh, if they can do that with tabernacles, why can't they do that with any stake center? Right? Uh, they can. Of course they can. So let's see. Let's go back here. So this one seems like, I mean, it essentially has happened, technically. Those buildings were tabernacles and stake buildings, and then they were 
later turned into uh, into temples. Okay, marriage is no longer <coughs> excuse me, marriage is no longer done in temples anywhere, only ceilings, live ce ceilings to a single parent. Let's see, live ceilings to a single parent. Oh, oh, like um, like a single mom or a single dad, rather. Okay, uh, temple recommends on your phone. That would be nice. I, I know everybody would probably appreciate that. Uh, two baptismal fonts in certain temples. And uh, that is true. This, In fact, the Salt Lake Temple, as part of the renovation, is going to have two baptismal fonts. And, and there's other ones, too. So I think we're going to see more of those. Number 10, further clarifications to the word of wisdom, uh, loosening restrictions with coffee, which is probably someone's wish. <laughs> he, he puts in parentheses. Yeah. Um, missions for elders and sisters to be equal, 20 months. Yeah, I kind of don't see that happening, especially after this uh, last conference. Because like, if they wanted to do that, uh, this last conference would be the time that they would have probably announced that. Um, but it, it could happen still. It could happen. Number 12, remove significant missionaries to more remote. Uh, what? Remove significant missionaries to more remote areas. Uh, yeah, maybe. Number 13, no open microphone on Fast Sunday, invitation only. Uh, that may not be a bad idea, actually. <laughs> I've talked about, I've talked, well, he's saying on Fast Sunday. Yeah, well, duh, of course, Fast Sunday. That's fast and testimony, of course. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, but you don't want to take opportunities away from people, even if they go up there and they're. <laughs> sharing things other than their testimony. I, I feel like a lot of times you still can feel the spirit and, and you got to like let people do that. Maybe some people misuse that opportunity, but I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, number 14, young men's, young women's to meet two times a month. 15, ward Sunday school president to be put under the charge of elders and relief society. Um, number 16, increase in women's roles and women added to more callings that are traditionally men only callings as church goes into areas of the world where men are gone for long periods of time, seven days a week. 17 homeschool curriculum piloted. Uh, now see that that would be interesting and I'm kind of torn when it comes to homeschool because we actually did that for a year. It didn't really work too well. I think that it's good um, but at the same time I think that there's a necessity to still be um, have our presence you know, being members of the church, have our presence in school, in society to be a light. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't homeschool because like I said, we did it. But um, so I'm kind of like conflicted. I think it, it really just comes down to your family and uh, praying about it. But maybe things will get so bad. Yeah, maybe, maybe the church will be like, hey, uh, we're going to help you homeschool. I don't know. Number 18, family proclamation and living Christ canonized number 19 stake presidents to serve five years and bishops to serve three years. And uh, that would be interesting. I don't know how practical that one is. There's some wards where you don't have very many options when it comes to bishops, but anyway. All right. So thank you, Mike Goodman for that. Some things to consider, but the main one that I want to concentrate on here is uh, basically the prefab smaller temples and also stake buildings to be retrofitted as temples. Now, let's see, I have this one from Audrey. Audrey comments a lot on the channel. Um, I can't remember if I've made a video based of, off of one of her videos or, or sorry, one of her emails or comments, but I am now. Okay, so she says, I posted this on your video about temple recommend temple recommends but no you may not see it yeah by the way guys it's like impossible it's impossible for me to respond to every single comment um there was a time when i was able to do that uh, not so much anymore and the longer your comment is the less likely i am to respond to it because then i have to dedicate the time to read it i want to make sure i'm not missing a question that i need to respond to and so sometimes i have to kind of like pick and choose so i, I the ones that are easy to reply to i just do it because it's easy but other ones i i just have to it depends on how busy i am at the time so don't be offended if i don't respond to your comments or your emails i, I have to be i have to be choosy that's just the nature of it she continues also it would not let me post the link yeah by the way guys <sighs> 
YouTube does not let you really post links. Like sometimes, somehow, some of them get through, but normally there's just an automated process that blocks them. So if you have a link, uh, the best way is just through email. So uh, someone posted it on Ezra's Eagle, Ezra's Eagle Facebook page. Uh, by the way, a couple of your videos have been posted on there recently. That is how I found you two months ago. Uh, since then, you have over 4,000 more subs than when I subscribed. Uh, the ones I saw recently was your Jews building temple and the one you did on Ezra's Eagle. So anyway, these modular temples only taking a year, uh, they are looking at a goal of 1,000 temples. Uh, I don't know the time frame. So this is a quote from, I think this thing here is a quote. No, 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 the quote's right here. So, Audrey, I would be interested where you heard this. Um, I didn't have time to go through the Ezra's Eagle Facebook page. And by the way, it's a good page. Um, again, I'm not like a huge Ezra, Ezra Eagle person. I'm not saying it's wrong at all. Uh, I just I haven't really ha had a chance to really get my hands on it. Um, I've done a couple videos, but I, there's more work that needs to be done. Uh, it's just kind of on the back burner uh, for me right now. But the idea of thousands or a, a thousand temples that is quite ambitious and very interesting uh here's a quote i think this is from the ezra's eagle page uh quote the helena montana temple will be the first temple built using modular construction methods in other words modules made in a factory and assembled on site and uh, i'm sure most people are familiar with that it, you know they, they they do the same thing with houses uh you can get a modular house uh so you can like easily add on to your house or, or whatever uh continuing architectural features single attached central tower ordinance rooms one instruction room one ceiling room <clears throat> and one baptistry total floor area ten thousand square feet now that right <clears throat> that right there i'm going to use that uh in an activity i'm about to do right after we go on to the next tab because uh, i pulled it up and i did find at least one other temple that fits this description the central tower and then 10,000 square feet so we're going to take a look at that in just a minute um, and then built on the site of existing stake center uh, and then she says, although this is not an official church site, it looks legitimate. And she gives me a link to uh, churchofjesuschristtemples.org. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we are no stranger to this website. It's, it's the best website out there uh, when it comes to temple facts and stuff like that. And sometimes I come here to look at different things. So whoever puts this together, if you're watching, good job. This is a really good job. Uh, I, I've been following this site since, I don't know, probably the beginning. I don't know. But it says right here, Temple Facts. Um, right here, the Helena Te Montana Temple will be the first temple built using modular construction methods. And uh, modular construction, that's a strategy you would probably want to use if you want to make a lot of temples, you know, to save on money. Um you know, if you're looking at uh, just doing a bunch of temples within a short period of time, this is, would probably be the way that you'd want to do it. So what I did, so here, here's what it looks like, okay? Has the central spire, and then right here it says 10,000 square feet, right? Um, so this one is the Helena Montana Temple. Now, on the same website, there is a chronological list of temples. And so I thought it would be fun to maybe maybe go through some of these. So temples under construction, and then this is broken down by the groundbreaking date uh, for this section right here, temples under construction. And so here's the Helena Montana temple at 207. So um, let's take a look at some of these. I think I already saw this one central spire but this one's 31,000 square feet this is salvador brazil beautiful temple um let's see pittsburgh pennsylvania okay now this one this one looks like the helena montana temple you have like this arch in the right here a, a lot of temples do but it looks very similar 
So anyway, the central spire. And now this one's going to be 32,000 square feet. So this probably probably isn't the same. But maybe it is. Maybe with like the prefab, maybe you can, they have like two or three different styles. Because look right here. It's like you have one, like roughly one, two, I'm going to call this two, one, two, three, um, not levels, but uh, what do you call it? Uh, tiers or, you know, one, two, three. And then the Pittsburgh, it has the same thing. One, two, three. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll bet you anything that these two are part of the same uh, prefabrication process. This is just larger. So, and this one was what? It was 32,000 32, square feet. So let's look at that Brazilian one again. Let's see, Salvador, Brazil. Uh, this one's 31,000, but no, it has like two floors right here. So no, I don't think that would be part of the same series. Uh, let's look at the Nairobi, Kenya temple. No, and th this one, it doesn't have the square footage. Okay, what about uh, Niai? Neyaifu Tonga. No, same thing. All right, let's look at Phnom Penh, Cambodia. No, oh, wait, 10,000 square feet. Uh, it has a central spire. Yeah, and it looks like it's basically, it's like built the same way. You have like the, um, you have like these corner I don't know how you how you would call it, but like these kind of corner parts uh, that kind of shoot out of the corner. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like here, you have one right here. If you can see my cursor, it's almost like if you look at it top down, it's like a kind of like a cross or like a uh, well, yeah, like a cross. Um, and then the corners of the cross, you have like this like smaller section that kind of sticks out. And the same thing is happening here with the Phnom Phen Cambodia temple. So both of them being 10,000 square feet, I'm going to say that I'll bet this is the same process. And it's really cool that it looks like they can be customized. Even though they're prefab, uh, it looks like they can be customized a little bit. But basically the layout is the same. Okay, like the interior layout is probably the same. So Cambodia, um, let's look at Casper, Wyoming. Uh, yeah, look at that. that. That is absolutely, and how big is this? 10,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet. So here you go. You have that part that sticks out of the corner, the arch in the front, the central spire, the three tiers, which obviously it's that part of the tar architecture is probably meant to be symbolic, you know, the three tiers. Um, so, and, and you can see that uh, even though these are probably prefab temples, we know that this one is, uh, they still look unique. Cause like when I heard that, that was something I was a little bit worried about is like, because when they did the smaller temples during President Hinckley's time, uh, I was kind of disappointed because a lot of those temples kind of look the same, you know, like a lot more similar in appearance than, it, than what it looks like we're seeing here. So for example, you look at the, let's go to Wikipedia, um, Palmyra Temple. So we got this, okay. Uh, the photos aren't on here aren't very good, but I'll pull this up. And then I think there's like the, uh, I think the Anchorage, Anchorage, Alaska, LDS Temple. Yeah, here we go. Let's go to Wikipedia. Let's take a look at that. See, it looks like it, it looks like exactly the same, <laughs> like exactly the same. Um, and that's kind of what I was worried about. Now I know that the interiors would be different. They're still going to customize it according to the, um, surrounding culture, right? 
but uh the outside looks remark remarkably the same the exterior but on these they do look significantly different including the, the cambodia one that looks like a like a buddhist temple you know it has it has that kind of um southeast asian uh, aesthetic to it so anyway so there's this sorry i want to look at a few more hope you don't mind then we'll move on pago pago american samoa huh. 17,000 square feet no that's not the same uh Bacolod philippines temple yeah that kind of looks the same 26,700 square feet but the layout is still pretty much the same okay what about free free town sierra leone no 18,000 square feet um bahia blanca argentina no 19,000 um grand junction colorado yeah this definitely looks like it's the same it's 25,000 square feet so i don't i don't know i don't know let's look at linden utah no this is like the double spire one 81,000 square feet that's big compared to these other ones that we're looking at farmington new mexico 25,000 square feet um elko nevada oh this one definitely look at this 10,000 square feet single spire yeah it looks very much like the helena montana temple you know there's differences but it looks the same let's just do a couple more um burley idaho no this one is no 38,000 square feet smithfield utah no this one kind of has like a double spire sort of there's like a dome thing back here i like how that looks it's pretty 81,000 square feet it's a big one uh yorba linda california wow i like that but no uh 30,000 square feet lubumbashi democratic republic of the congo no okay so it looks like there's at least a few examples um so yeah i think that there's something to that uh just looking just looking at that and maybe there maybe there's like several different patterns <clears throat> you know what i mean because a lot of those did kind of look the same and in uh, what i'm mostly referring to is the interior layout the the floor plan so yeah okay let's move on let's see this is from uh janet <clears throat> excuse me janet carlson also a frequent commenter on the channel attended the draper temple workers devotional last night normally the temple president the temple matron the visiting authority and his wife all speak the only thing the temple president did was to introduce elder william k jackson of the 70. elder jackson was one of the new 70 70s sustained in the april 2020 general conference he was the only speaker he's he spoke for one hour his assignment is missionary work not temple the draper temple has only two session rooms so is either considered a it's either considered a middle or a small temple the devotion is for all temple temple workers and they can invite one guest um skip down uh number one this is what he said temples he like everyone like everyone else waits for the last five to ten minutes to hear about new temples he anticipates <clears throat> excuse me he anticipates there will be more coming he did however say that president nelson's desire is that we could have enough temples that no one would have to travel more than one hour to get to one i spoke personally with him after and he told me even with the number of temples in utah there is still a need for more <clears throat> excuse me um 
you see that's that's pretty incredible right there could you imagine there being a temple within an hour of of everybody i mean that's essentially it's impossible really um you know because there's members mem the members of the church are just spread out all over the place um i want to look at a map let's go to a temples map here uh this is that same website so yeah like spain for example you know we just had the barcelona temple that was announced this last conference but there are members of the church all throughout the country as well as portugal so let's see how far it is between zaragoza or zaragoza i'm sorry that's how they they say it in, they, they they go like like a th sound uh for z's and c's that make a s anyway that's beyond okay let's see what the distance is between no let's look at the distance between bilbao bilbao this is up in the basque country uh let's see how long it takes to drive from um let's see directions from bilbao to madrid and let's use go so right there you got to drive uh three hours and 52 minutes okay so if they're if they're really going to do this <clears throat> just using spain as an example if they're really going to do this and they're going to do thousands of temples then there's going to have to be one uh probably in bilbao it's uh i don't know if there's like a stake there um when i was on my mission uh this was one of the missions was it, right yeah i think it was the bilbao mission uh, i was the spain barcelona mission so we covered this like part of the country right here the east the east coast essentially and then the the islands over here palma de mallorca and we weren't allowed to go to ibiza though ibiza is a real <laughs> ibiza is not really known for being a good place to be um spiritually speaking so and then you got malaga down here it looks even further than bilbao to madrid so ju just think about it uh think about that you know if you're living in europe or or anywhere really uh let's look at the map for the united states let's zoom out you know uh you're living in like south dakota you know obviously we have members of the church in south dakota uh their closest options are this right here what is this one this is the winter quarters temple in omaha uh or the bismarck temple in north dakota and i i can just tell you i can tell you right now just looking at this those are more than an hour away so yeah looking at these stake centers um tabernacles although there's not very many tabernacles i don't think yeah we could see some a lot of action pretty soon uh which would be pretty amazing it, it's all connected you know I, I think it's all connected there's there's enough and i wasn't able to dig up all the comments and stuff but i, I know that there's been more comments about this about the prefabricated temples and um being within an hour uh being within an hour uh of everyone in the church so those kind of go together prefab lots of temples within an hour of everybody they they go together um all right so that was from janet carlson thank you janet let's see what who was this what was on this one this is dan dibble let's see um is this the one? Oh yeah he i'm not going to read the email but he sent me this email and it included this chart this is number of temples okay this this graph is even more impressive than the church growth uh graph which is already it looks like an exponential graph but this one right here for temples like look all the way in the heck up here this one is like really truly exponential you have it divided into the groups announced under construction dedicated but if you take all those together you just look at the light blue and uh yeah right now to, or at the time that this was made i guess 2021 it's just sky high 
and it doesn't look like there's any there's no stopping with this so i would be excited if i were you you know if you're wanting a temple near you it, it seems like uh we're getting to a time where that's more and more a possibility uh despite there being very many uh members of the church in your area uh you remember you know i just recently interviewed thomas holton he's an lds irish uh author he had um a really close brush with death, um, which inspired him to write a trilogy of books. Uh, make sure to check out that interview. But he, you know, the Irish saints, they're they're waiting for a temple. And um, he said that there were only like a handful of stakes uh, in Ireland, uh, including Northern Ireland, which is still part of the United Kingdom. But between Ireland, the country, and Northern Ireland, uh, the territory that belongs to the UK, you know, there's a handful of stakes. And so this could be an option for them because otherwise their closest temple, if you're in Ireland, is the uh, Preston temple right here. Uh, pretty much your only option is to take a plane or, or maybe a boat. I don't, I don't know how many people take boats from Ireland to the UK, but um, yeah. And then you think about up here in Scotland, you know, the United Kingdom is made up of uh three or a few, a few different parts you got wales over here a lot of my family is from wales my ancestry uh primarily wales and england which is right here uh but the, so you got those two uh there's no temple in wales there's no temple in scotland everybody knows scotland it's up here um and then we got ireland right so the only part of the uk well sorry uh when we're talking about the united kingdom there's also northern ireland that belongs to the uk so when we're talking about the british isles in ireland uh these three temples there's this one right here the london temple and then birmingham and then preston they're all in england you know for if you're in wales the closest one is birmingham or i guess if you're up here then it's preston if you're in Scotland, the closest one is Preston. So um, there's a problem, you know, there's a problem. It'd be nice to see one in Glasgow or Edinburgh. It'd be nice to see one in Dublin or maybe Belfast up here, uh, wherever there's stakes. So, yeah. Um, so it's looking more and more likely, you know, that a temple may be coming your way if you're if you're in those areas. Uh, now this was this is also this is all the same person right Dan Dibble yeah Dan Dibble sent me another uh, email he said here's fun calculation we might have enough temples soon or already to do all the work for the millennium and uh, this is just like a rough you know he's just kind of playing with some numbers so assumptions uh, 300 temples 100 endowments per hour 144 144 temple hours per week 52 weeks per year. 1,000 years equals uh, 2.24, or sorry, it, it's like later in night when I'm recording this, uh, 224.6 billion. Uh, estimates of world population, estimates of world population ever is 115 billion plus any more during the millennium. Of course, we, we could use hundreds more of geographical for geographical convenience but it's not too crazy to think that we might already have enough with just those announced just my thoughts keep up the great work and ignore the opposition thank you he's talking about the the rude people out there and by the way if i block you it doesn't mean that you're um it doesn't mean that you can't still watch the channel you just can't comment and if you know if you want to know if you've been blocked uh write a comment okay and then go out and then come back and then if it's not there anymore like it seems like it just automatically went away then surprise you're a punk and i would appreciate an apology and then i'll reinstate you um again i i don't mind that you have different opinions but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take abuse <laughs> i'm just not it's not good for me spiritually or psychologically i i have to protect myself um but i'm not trying to like silence you okay so that's a really interesting thing. Let's assume that he's right. You know, we, we don't know what's going to happen in the millennium or what's going to be revealed. There may be more functions that temples can serve, right? Yeah, yeah, I think we'd be 
naive to think that we know everything already, especially when the prophet is saying that there's uh, there's an ongoing restoration and uh, there's going to be things revealed in the millennium uh, that have not been known since the foundation of the world. So even if we complete all these ordinances, you know, let's say that we get done with all the ordinances halfway through the millennium, there might be more like higher ordinances that we have no idea of, um, you know, that we just don't have an understanding of right now. And I'm not saying that that's the case, obviously, but anything's possible. So uh, don't don't worry about the large number of temples that are being built and then running out of work. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's still going to be purposes afterwards. Uh, again, I've talked about it a number of times on the channel. Uh, the original plan for uh, the Zion or the New Jerusalem City Plat, it was going to be square, um, broken up into blocks, a grid, you know, and <clears throat> uh, the pattern was going to be about 15,000 to 20,000 people per city living it within that um, like block. And uh, in the center of New Jerusalem, there were two blocks that were for a 24 temple complex. And not all the temples were going to be for just regular uh, ordinance work. There are going to be some that were going to be administration buildings. There are going to be other ones that were going to be for education. Um, uh, 12 of them were for the Melchizedek priesthood. 12 of them were for the Aaronic priesthood. So I think there's a lot about temples that we don't yet know. Uh, right now, we're just focusing on these, the ordinances of uh, salvation, right? Uh, but there could be much more uh, that you can do with temples. And they may have, by by the by the end of them, or even halfway through the millennium, uh, it may be something else altogether that we're doing. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. So, um, okay, so that's just a small taste of some of the emails and comments that I've heard. I know that I've heard a lot more, actually, so I, I feel pretty certain just because there's so many and there's so many different people saying it that yeah i think that this is happening um i i, I totally believe <laughs> or sorry i i would not be surprised in the least if we end up with a thousand temples soon um it may happen much more easily than you think and at any time let's go to this map and let's zoom in to Independence, Missouri. And let's go to satellite. Okay, where is it? Right here. At any given time, whenever the Lord sees fit, he could tell the prophet to turn this, what's currently a visitor center, into a temple. This was designed uh, to be the same specifications as what the original first temple would have been in the 24 temple complex. It was designed so that it could fit in with the complex. What you're looking at is essentially a future temple unless something changes. But uh, this was during the time of David o, David o. McKay. Uh, it's recorded in Alvin R. Dyer's diary that him and the architect uh, that designed this, consulted with David O. McKay. It was built so that it, it could be um, turned into a temple and part of the 24 temple complex. So who knows? Maybe this next conference, they'll announce that. What What's to stop them from doing that? Nothing. Whenever it's time, it's time. Uh, as for over here across the street, the uh, so-called temple lot, which would have been the first temple constructed of the 24 temple uh, complex. Uh, I don't know how things are going to play out. I would assume that since it was like shown to Joseph Smith that, that, that the temple was supposed to be there and they laid the cornerstones, that's probably still the case. But you could still get things going. You know, it may be that this will be the only temple here as we move into the millennium. And then later, once the wicked have been consumed and once Christ is here, and I'm not saying that the Church of Christ Temple Lot is among the wicked. I'm sure that there's many good people part of that church. But once the second coming happens, uh, they're going to have to acknowledge uh, that 
Christ is king over the earth. Uh, if they don't convert to the church, then they're, they're going to have to yield to his political cap, his politi political power. And he could say, you know, you know, this area is now mine, you know, um, and then he could do whatever he wants with the land. So anyway, at any given time, this could become a temple. So this is another thing to, to think about. And could you imagine? <laughs> could, <laughs> could, you, could you imagine if this conference, they announced that they're going to do that with this building? That, okay, we're closing it down. It's going to be renovated and retrofitted, retro, retrofitted to become a temple everybody would lose their minds everyone would know at that point that the second coming has just gotten that much closer uh in a recent video i was talking about how again that um the original design for new jerusalem and when i say new jerusalem i'm talking about the center place i'm not talking about because another definition of new jerusalem is all of north america and south america that's one way that it's been defined but when we're talking about the center place and the the um the city plat uh i i lost my train of thought oh i was talking about how the original intention is that cities would be between fifteen thousand to twenty thousand people that they would be self-sustaining you know you, you they would be able to sustain themselves uh with the surrounding land with our agriculture and that essentially a city was designed to be a stake and a stake was designed to be a city and right here this building this is a stake center so nothing nothing is in the way right now of the church or the prophet receiving revelation and saying okay we this is the beginning of new jerusalem this is now a temple and um and then you have this stake center right here could you imagine in the future like once we get through the millennium just all this changing you know doing lots of construction and turning it into the original plan that uh, joseph smith laid out and maybe this stake center building maybe this this remaining here and um, and then you have this, you know, the small city plat city that it was intended to be. Okay, uh, that will be it for this one. So a lot of things to think about. Uh, if you have more information, feel free to send that to me. If you have links, you'll need to email me. Otherwise, you can put it in the comments. But um, feel free to share with me anything that you know or that you've heard. Um, and, and you guys, you know, take this all with a grain of salt because it is just anecdotal, okay? Meaning that it's just like people, what they've heard, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't be true. We'll just have to wait and see what actually happens. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Uh, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.